Hello friends, Miss Ashley here. Let's do a science experiment together. You will need the following supplies. Ask an adult to help you gather them. You will need jars or glass cups here, or glasses, pardon me, glass glasses that are the same size. You will also need a fork or a spoon that are metal, a towel just in case spills happen, a pitcher or a container that you can use for pouring water. Remember, we're practicing pouring in the classroom, so I hope friends that you're able to pour. And if you need help pouring, ask an adult to help you. Some food coloring for optional fun. And also another option, if you happen to have some tape at your house and a Sharpie marker, I found the tape to be very helpful when I was setting up my glasses. I went ahead and pre-poured mine. And as you can see, each of the glasses is at a different level. So when you're pouring your glasses, whether you're using the tape or not, you can estimate how high you want the glasses to be. So friends, what do we know about sound? Take a listen around you. What sounds do you hear? Share with a family member. What is sound? Sound is energy things make when they vibrate. And our brain can interpret that vibration into words or into music. So today we're gonna to play a fun game with sound. I have my spoon that I'm gonna tap very gently against my glasses. So we're taking a look at the different level of glasses. And we're gonna focus on the blue glass here for just a moment and the purple glass. What sound do you think that they will make? Scientists like to make predictions or take a guess what they think is gonna happen next. Do you know what that big word is? Hypothesis. Can you say that with me? Hypothesis. So I'm gonna take a guess of what I think is gonna happen when I tap the blue glass. I think this is gonna make a low sound because there's a low amount of water in it. Now what about this high glass over here? There's a lot of water in here. Is this gonna make a high sound or a low sound? Hmm. And then I can try out my hypothesis and see how it went. What does that sound remind you of? To me, it reminds me of wind chimes. Do you have wind chimes at your house or in your neighborhood? Do you hear them when the wind blows? So the blue glass makes a high sound and the purple glass makes a low sound. Now that I know that this, this was high and this one's low, what about the pink or the red glass and the green glass? What sound do you think that they will make? Hmm, let's tap and find out. They make a sound that's similar to each other. The tone is just one slightly deeper than the other. How do all the glasses sound together? If you wanted to mark your glasses like with letters or with numbers, you're more than welcome to do that. I went ahead and did numbers on my glasses. So before we play our game, let's go over that now. For the purple glass, there's one dot. For the green glass, there are one, two dots. For the pink or red glass, there are one, two, three dots. And for the blue glass, there's one, two, three, four dots. When we play our, what do you sound? What sound do you think that glass is making game? You can hold up your fingers to predict what you think, which glass is making that sound. So I have a cover here that I'm gonna place in front of the glasses so you're not able to see them for a moment, but they're still there, they're not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna cover them for just a moment and I'm gonna tap one and then you're gonna guess which 
one made that sound. And you can hold up your fingers. All right? That was glass number four. That was an example to help you know how our game is going to be played. I have a visual here just to remind you of where the glass, just to remind you of the glasses. You don't necessarily have to do that unless you want to. If you do want to do that, I used a piece of paper and drew some rectangles and colored them in. All right, glasses are still there. They're just hiding for just a moment. All right. Oh, I got so excited to play our game, I forgot to put on my thinking cap. So pick up your thinking cap. Here we go. What sound does your thinking cap make? Tune those ears. Quiet your body. What glass is making that sound? Do you have a guess? Hold up your number on your fingers. Which glass you think it is? Let's find out. Keep your numbers up. Keep your numbers up. Here we go. How did your guess turn out? Now, some of you may be feeling a bit disappointed. My guess didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. Uh, what can we do when we feel disappointed? Hmm. What can we do when we were in the classroom? In the classroom, we could take a break. We could go and do something different and come back and try again. Perhaps we need some squeezes. Maybe we need to take some deep breaths. So when you're playing this game with your family members later on and someone in your family is feeling discouraged or disappointed, you can let them know, hey, we can take some deep breaths together and we can keep on playing. So let's play again. What glass is making that sound? Let's try closing our eyes this time and listening to the sound. Let's find out which class it was. Keep your numbers up on your fingers. How did your guess turn out? Scientists like to do experiments all the time to figure out how to figure out an answer to a question. So you can play this game with your family members and have them take a guess. I think it's which glass. You can play that wonderful sound game with them. Another fun game that you can play. You can make music. This reminds me of an xylophone. Do you remember what that is? It's a musical instrument. And today we have an xylophone here at our house. So you can have fun playing around with the, with the different tones. Now we do need to be mindful of the other people around us that if we are, if we're too loud, and our family tells us, stop, I don't like that, that's hurting my ears. We're gonna have to reach a compromise with them. Oh man, I really wanna play my xylophone. When can I play? How long can I play? That's something that we can ask about. If you're not able to play your xylophone right now, don't worry. There's another fun activity that you can do. What happens when I take this blue glass and this pink red glass. What happens when I add them together? Hmm. Some of you know about color mixing, but don't give it away. Don't give it away if you know. What would happen if I take some of this glass? <gasps> Can you see that? Maybe I need to add some more. Oh, 
kind of a bluey purple color here. Cool, I wonder what sound it makes. I changed my tones on my glasses by adding water. That's so cool. Another fun activity. I know there's more, there's so much more. Science is so much fun. Another fun activity I can do is I can take a container that can go outside and I can gather up some items such as maybe a leaf. This one might need to dry a little bit. We'll see. Maybe a blade of grass. I happen to have paint brushes at my house. And what I can do is, let's pretend for a moment that this is my sidewalk or my, or my fence that I can paint. I can take some water and pour it into my bowl. Whoop. Oh. Splash myself a little bit. I can try. I'm gonna try with the try. I'm gonna try painting, making pictures. I can even try making letters. If I'm a three-year-old child, I can try making lines and circles and a curve. If I'm a four, four and a half, five-year-old child, I can practice writing my name. I can practice writing numbers. I can practice names of my family members. And if I'm going into kindergarten, I can practice my first and last name. So isn't this great? We started off with a science experiment exploring sound, and we were able to dive into some color mixing. We came up with an outdoor activity. There are so many fun things to do with science, and I appreciate you joining me today. If you're looking for more fun activities to do, check out the Home Connection newsletter and explore our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me today, friends. I hope you had a great time.